So hi, I'm Jason Kreidner. Uh, it's very nice to be speaking with you today, and thank you for the organizers for the uh, Open Hardware Summit to, um, to have me out here. Uh, there's been so many uh, powerful messages given today, and so many stories that people have told that have, um, uh, um, have reached me personally. Um, and I think that uh, um, those messages um, that you're hearing, um, most of these are really geared towards, towards you. Um, but a lot of these people here are also doing very good at, at engaging the rest of the world. Um, and what I'd really like to, to tell um, um, you here today is that as a community of open hardware developers, I'd really like for us to think about um, what our message um, should be to the broader world because the right message is extremely powerful. So um, I'm Jason Kreidner. I'm an employee of Texas Instruments and a founder of BeagleBoard.org. Um, but when I started, um, so a lot of you don't really know me, and when I started programming, um, it was this book. And this is a book that my, my mother gave me when I was about eight years old. Um, and I learned to program, you know, sitting at a, a, a TRS-80. And the only way that I could do that, um, well, the only, I wanted to play games, right? I mean, I'm a kid. I don't, what am I really doing, right? I'm learning to program because I was typing in these games and playing them, and I wanted to change the games. I wanted to cheat. And so I said, any time that the name of the, the player was, was coming in, uh, if it detected the name was Jason, well, he won every time. And, 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 and that was um, a very simple experience uh, for me to get the, get the taste of, of what a computer is and you know, what is this, this programming and logic flow, right? So what is this, this thing? Um, but I wanted to know more. Right, so I went out and got this other book, also at, uh, at, at Radio Shack, um, and it was um, Getting Started in Electronics. Um, and I honestly feel like I have better intuition um, play, building every single circuit uh, in that book than I got through four years of engineering education, electronics engineering education. Um, and I, spent, I mowed lawns and spent every um, you know, you know, diamond dollar I, I earned um, going and buying the electronics. But, but things have changed a lot um, since since this was your first experience with technology, right? We, um, we, we had a, a, a lot of control here and, and, and not a lot of, of other technology getting in the way of our experience. Now, if I try to do the same thing um, with, with kids today, it, they're, they're never going to waste the time typing. I know they can just go to a website, click, and play games. Uh, no need to, to, to modify, right? Or they can find somebody else to do that. Uh, and they'll never be able to go and, and just like instantly be able to make the games that have that, that same gratification level they have of just downloading on their app on their phone, right? So, so technology has changed uh, very much, and you can't um, engage uh, uh, kids and, and people um, wanting to, to learn to make um, in the same way. Um, and, and in my, um, you know, I, I was in, so I've been an engineer for, for 22 years at TI, and I saw an opportunity um, to go and, and make this thing um, the, the Beagle board, right? So it's a little single board computer. And, and the, the vision here was to make electronics um, as easy to, to build as uh, creating a web page, right? Um, and, and, and so um, I, I went and uh, we went off and, and, and made this thing and started up this, uh, this BeagleBoard.org thing. And if you, if you plug it in, it, you, know, you open up a, a web browser, and it actually has a built-in tutorial on JavaScript. And the, the, the vision here is that, that if you can edit a web page, right, you can do HTML, um, you know, maybe some CSS or maybe not, and a little bit of JavaScript, um, that that's all the skills that you, you need to start learning how to actually connect up physical devices and start you know, programming in the physical world. And that's something that's still um, engaging for people. You know, you, maybe I can't build um, um, Halo. I don't, I'm not even keeping up with the latest games. Maybe I can't build the, the latest and greatest video games. Um, but, but I felt like I could get people engaged in, in understanding computers so that it's not a, a future where um, technology is just unapproachable anymore and we don't have um, anybody that has the, the, the skill to understand it to, to really build things. It just becomes this this mystery force, but something like this, you know, my vision is that we can, you know, have this web page, you can start doing all these physical interactions, and, um, and, and really get people engaged in what is a computer, and, um, and what can you do with, with programming. Um, at the time, I really didn't know much about this uh, Arduino thing. Um, it turns out that that's a, a, a very powerful thing. Um, it's taught a lot of people to do physical programming. Um, 
And uh, um, so find out about that, that later. Um, but, but this is really a very common theme, and I think that, that, that most of you in this room feel very similar to the way I do, right? Some people, you know, just want to, um, to, to make things and to, to sell those things to other people and just, um, you know, rule the world, right? They just, they just want to, you know, uh, collect um, money or collect um, praise for the things that they created. Um, but I think that, that most of you in here are very much motivated by not just making those things and having them be consumed, but actually enabling other people um, to, to do those things with you, right? You get so much fun and passion out of, out of, out of making and creating things that you want to see other people um, have that same joy um, that you get from the feeling of, of creating something new and understanding uh, something um, new and fundamental. And, um, and, and, and that's where you see um, uh, some, some other uh, really fantastic and interesting things uh, come along. Um, so there's a, a very similar concept, I think, uh, to, to, to what got me motivated doing this, and also for a kind of similar paradigm. And I work for a semiconductor company. We make a chip. Hey, it aligns with our, our goal. I love the, the statement about um, if you can align stupidity and, um, and greed uh, <laughs> with, with your goals, that you can do wonderful things, right? Uh, that, that statement was, was great earlier. And um, so I had that, 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 that sort of opportunity, right, to align what I wanted to do as a, a personal passion um, with something that, that aligned well with my um, big corporate environment. And, and, and so other people saw that model. You, maybe um, I'm going to go ahead and ask a question. Uh, how many of you have heard of the Raspberry Pi? How many of you believe it's open hardware? I saw most of the hands go down. I think it's so. It, it's 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 interesting because I saw several presentations here that referred to the the Raspberry Pi as being open hardware, and I'd be very interested to find out what your definition of open hardware is that would make it fit um, within that model. Um, so we have a very nicely defined definition of what open hardware is as part of the Open Hardware um, Association, right? That, that's um, so. Uh, it, it, so you you can't get the you can't get the manuals. Um, for the full chip, you can't actually buy the chips. Um, the, 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 the schematic isn't a, in a source format that you can modify, um, and the, the layout for the, the board is also not something you can modify. Um, so they've come out with a very, a very powerful message, um, and I think it's a fantastic message, and it's a very good message, and they've done an excellent job of delivering it. Um, and, and that's it's, you know, a, a, a $25 computer that gets you know, kids engaged in learning and program again. And that is a, a laudable goal. And guess what? A lot of people share that goal. A lot of us want to see um, the world a better place and a place um, where people are learning um, these skills. And, and they've done a fantastic job of making that happen. But what they haven't done is made it open hardware. Um, so, we did something a little bit different um, for, for BeagleBoard at the start, right? We, 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 we've always been open hardware, um, and that's been a requirement from, from me um, from personally about having anything uh, labeled as, as BeagleBoard.org that you, you can get the schematics in source format, you can get um, uh, the, the, the board layout in source format. Um, all of the materials in the BOM are available through distribution um, in quantity one. Um, but we've had a fundamental problem in that the pricing for the processor, we had very favorable pricing on the processor for, for our boards. Um, and that means that, it, that, that it's very difficult for somebody to build something else at any sort of similar price point. Um, so I'm excited that, that after much fighting, um, um, the folks that I've been you know, speaking at my, with at my company, the market folks, are going to drop that 1,000 unit pricing um, by more than half, so I think it's some stupid number like $25 today, um, which how you build a $50 board if you have a $25 processor, it's not possible. Um, don't try to get there. Um, but they are going to, um, to drop that for the highest end processor to something under $12. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, but in, in, in any case, I think there are a lot of you that have your own visions um, about what you'd like to be the, the and, and knowledge about how it is the best that you can reach um, other people that need to learn about the power of, of programming and then power of electronics and power of technology in general so that you can put those powers in the hands of people that want to 
that do have that empathy, right? So that, that do care about that user experience and not just putting everybody in the largest bucket possible um, in order to sell to them. Um, and if you don't use that, that TIA chip, if you use some other chip, but I do want to see an open hardware platform um, being um, preferred uh, for, for people for, for doing education um, and for, for them to, to get the first taste of like what a computer really is um, so that they can get underneath it and find out all about how it works and they can derive um, their own things out of it. Uh, so, so I would just say that um, um, we don't really have uh, that message, I think, as part of the, the Open Source Hardware Association that's that's as simple to understand. That's not just something that's focused on on us, right? We're 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 a nice um, community that 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 you know has some some fundamental core beliefs and, and that that you know open source hardware is a is a prerogative. Um, but what we what we don't necessarily have is that that message to the average person. And and just just in the discussions just just last night about people, well, it doesn't really, you know, not everybody really needs to know about that. It's not about the general public. It's just, you know, as long as the people actually designing these platforms kind of understand the value that that's all that's necessary. And I say that is absolutely positively wrong. Um, the general public, um, with all, all of the power it has to make decisions um, for all of us, um, is who we need to speak to and have, it understand, have them understand how is open source hardware important. Um, that I, you know, homemade pie always tastes better. Um, so I, I, th I think that um, uh, just uh, all the wonderful people speaking today, um, so many people, so many brilliant people in this room with so many great things, um, but I would like for us to, to, to really get together as an organization, think about not just about all the wonderful things that we can create and all the things that people do with them, but how do we let people know um, what the importance is of, of open source hardware and create that message um, so that um, it, it's preserved and, and that technology is actually something that we can engage at all levels um, into the future. So I hope you'll uh, um, work with Ashwa on that. Thank you.